Hello, my name is Whiteout. Today I'm going to talk about all the things that can completely ruin your latex. Now, latex, it's a fun investment. It's not a very sound investment though. There's a lot that can just completely destroy your gear and you may not even realize it when it's happening. Um, one of the reasons why I'm wearing this white suit is because uh, colored gear, especially white gear in particular, yellows very easily. And that happens due to um, exposure to sunlight mainly. In fact, you wanna keep any rubber gear uh, away from direct sunlight and away from any sources of heat. So if you're gonna you know, store your gear, make sure it's in the back of the closet where it won't get a lot of light to it or anything like that because um, I've been lucky enough to have this suit five years, which if you can get anything more than three years out of cat suit, you're doing pretty good for yourself because latex just does not last. But um, in the case of all of my white gear, not just this suit, it's it yellows pretty much instantaneously. In fact, the day you get it, you know, just even the exposure to oxygen and the sm slight oxidation that happens with it. Thankfully, Photoshop exists, so all my pictures and videos and stuff with it, uh, I can get it looking crisp white and do some color correction with it. But if you look at it in person, it's just, it's very yellowed. It, it just does not look good anymore. Um, and because of that is mainly due to exposure to sunlight, which not only can cause your gear to yellow, but it can also cause it to crack and dry out. Um, moving on then to toys. Some big, big offenders are uh, silicone toys, especially like those gummy novelty toys. Um, but I <laughs> use this, the, uh, the raw dog from Fort Trough, and this thing will destroy your latex. It, um, if you leave it on your gear or say if you have a play sheet and you just leave it on there for more than like a minute or two, it'll start bubbling up around it. And here's an example of a, uh, a hood that I accidentally left that on and you can see uh, the rubber is bubbling up around the areas of, of where the toy was at. And I'm actually going to do an experiment with this toy on uh, some old rubber just so we can time and see how long it takes before this weird chemical reaction actually occurs. So some other toys, uh, just regular silicone dildos. Here's another Fort Trough one. Um, again, I've left this on a play sheet before. It's just completely bubbled up around it. Not sure why these weird chemical reactions happen to these silicone toys, but you have to be aware of them because they will destroy your gear. Now, if you catch it soon enough, it's not permanent damage. It will, like the swelling and, you know, that picture that I showed you of the hood where it was bubbled up, that did go down over time. It took a good two months before I couldn't see it anymore, but thankfully I caught it early enough where it was not permanent. Permanent. However, I do know cases where some gear was just, it was bubbled to the point of just unwearability and it was just pretty much destroyed. Some other toys that you really have to watch out for, again, because um, they're all in the silicone toy family, uh, the cock sheath for the magic wand. Uh, definitely something you don't want to leave on your gear for too long and in fact, whenever someone's done using it, uh, I make sure that they don't leave it on the play sheet, that they put it on the floor, or they put it in a bag, or they do something because prolonged exposure to that with latex is very bad. And in addition, um, ox balls, they always have these nice little silicone cock sheaths or um, cock rings, and uh, these should not use with rubber. They will definitely uh, cause that same chemical reaction. So now moving on to metal. Now, there's a lot of metal that you may be wearing. For example, here is a harness from Mr. S. Um, I've called up their customer service and they claim that they use aluminum that's coated with uh, some kind of special metallic paint. But uh, here's a close up of the harness. I sincerely doubt that is aluminum and they may have changed it for future designs, but uh, these rivets that are on my harness I, I swear they're made of brass or something like that. And in fact, um, I've worn them on this suit before and thankfully I didn't wear it for an extended period of time, but everywhere where these little rivets are, when I've worn it on this suit, uh, I noticed a little brown spot where they were. And that's because uh, any brass 
any copper, any bronze, any tin, all of that is very bad for your latex. It will cause weird chemical reactions, especially with colored latex, and it'll just discolor it, it'll give it this weird bad brown color, and it'll also weaken it. So you really want to check if you're buying like a harness or something like that, um, that it's made out of a material like stainless steel. That's a big one that's very latex safe, and it's probably the cheapest. Some other materials like titanium or um, platinum, obviously, I don't think anyone's going to be making a harness out of those because that's just way too stupidly expensive. So if you are buying a harness with the intention of wearing it with rubber, make sure it uses stainless steel. So another thing that you really want to watch out for that can be damaging is sharp objects. Now. That may seem like common knowledge, but I'm not just talking about scissors or pins, also um, fingernails. I haven't cut my fingernails in about a week and they're, they're looking kind of long. And uh, you know, if I saw someone with these fingernails grabbing at my latex, I'd probably tell them to back off a bit because uh, it can be very easy to puncture, especially thin gear. Uh, with a long fingernail and that can even happen as you're putting it on and you just you pull a little too hard and it digs in there and ruins it. So now when we're talking about lubes, there are good lubes that you can use and there are lubes that will destroy your gear. In fact, anything that's oil based. So for example, gun oil or boy butter, both of those are horribly bad for your latex. Anything that's oil-based or petroleum-based, um, you know, Vaseline as well, that's another one that will just uh, completely damage your gear and eat it. And even if you just eat like a greasy burger or something like that, make sure you wash your face, you wash your hands, everything like that, because the grease from that will just dissolve your rubber so easily, it'll cause it to dry rot it prematurely, and it's just, it's, it's horribly bad for the gear. Also, some other other lubes, like I know Swiss Navy has a special, uh, you know, body friendly aloe type lube. Do not use that. That is very bad <laughs> for the gear. So instead of using those lubes, you're going to want to use something else. I always use Swiss Navy, but you can also use pure, wet, or uh, 9x6. Those are all very acceptable silicone lubes to use. And that's not the definitive list, but you really want to check the ingredients to make sure there's no oil, there's no moisturizers, and there's no, um, you know, you, and it should say it's latex safe on the bottle. Um, so now finally, the last thing I'm going to talk about that can be really damaging with to the rubber is automotive shine. Now I did another video about how to shine your gear. You can check that out right somewhere here. I'll post a little thing in post-production. <laughs> but um, definitely some things like Armor All, which I've seen people just spray on their gear and wipe. And yes, those will shine up the rubber in your car tires very well. But the, the rubber that's in your car tire is a completely different chemical composition than the latex that you wear. And something like that, which is made for that automotive setting, is way too harsh for your clothing. It'll completely dissolve it. It's just not a good, um, it, it, you just, just avoid any of that automotive rubber cleaning stuff at all costs. It's way too damaging. Get stuff that's specifically designed for latex clothing. Um, or check out my other video that I have, again, about shining purposes. Whatever you do, don't use automotive rubber. It will just prematurely dry rot your gear, much like sunlight. So I want to see firsthand just how long it takes to actually ruin a piece of gear. So I have uh, the raw dog from Fort Trough. Put that on there. And I've got a couple copper pennies. Let's place those around on there. And let's start our timer and see how long it takes to actually see a change with the gear. All right, it's been five minutes. Let's see if there's any progress with the raw dog, which there should be. Oh yeah, Look at that you can see right here. It's already starting to bubble up a little bit. Um, you can also see down here where the lip of this was at. That's definitely bubbling up a little too. If I can get it to focus. <laughs> Yeah, let's put that back on there, give it some more time. Let's see if any pennies are doing anything. Nope, nothing yet with the pennies. I'm imagining the metal is going to take a bit longer for any reaction. But yeah, hey, let's give it 15 minutes and come back to it. 
All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's check on the progress of our toy. Ooh, yeah, that's definitely, <laughs> you can definitely see where that was at now. So you can see right here is a bubble, up there is a bubble, and down there is a bubble. So basically where it was touching the most, uh, you can definitely see uh, some distinct bubbling going on with the rubber. So I'm not quite sure why it does this weird um, chemical reaction, but yeah, it's that's just what happens. <laughs> and again, if you were to catch it at this point, you give it a good month or two, it'll definitely go down. But if you keep it up, it'll be permanently damaged. Let's check on the pennies real quick and see. Again, I don't think these will appear in a reasonable amount of time. This is more for long term storage. If you were to keep a piece of gear next to your rubber, yeah, it'll it'll probably discolor more over time because I don't see anything on there right now. But definitely these silicone toys, you'll see some pretty instantaneous uh, results when it comes to having those in contact with your latex. All right, so I'm at an hour, 13 minutes now. So it's it's been a little bit of time. Let's see what the damage is now. All right. So the bubbling's just a bit more pronounced than it was before. Obviously, if you let this overnight, like if you just tossed all your gear in a corner and this happened to be one of the things that was in that pile, it could be a lot more detrimental over time. But even still, this is a uh, is pretty significant. You definitely would see this wearing it, and it definitely won't look attractive with your latex bubbling out like this. Let's go over to the pennies and see if that did anything now. Uh, don't see much of anything on that. But again, you shouldn't uh, let this be a guide that, oh, it's safe to use copper. No, I've seen on countless forums and things like that how uh, metal has damaged latex. So please don't use this as an excuse for um, using these metals with your gear. Because just because you don't see any results here doesn't mean that that's not the case. Because obviously with something like this, with the toy, you can clearly see that there are definitely uh, some objects that are very damaging to the gear. So hopefully this is a good little lesson to show everyone uh, some of the things that can permanently ruin your gear. Uh, I am also working with my good friend over at Demi Design to see any uh, leather shines which also contain oil, which ones of those are most damaging to rubber. So I will be creating a follow up video with this when I get the results back from Demi Design. With that, that's the end of this video. Please comment, subscribe, do whatever, and I will see you in two weeks.